Welcome to Arabesque, the show that will bring you up and close to the most intriguing events coming from the Middle East and North African communities right here in Little London Town. We have come to the quaint bookshop, The Green Bookshop, celebrating award-winning author Leila Nadir's latest release book, The Orange Trees of Baghdad. I grew up mostly as, as a child in England and at that time in the 70s the Iraq was open and my family used to come and visit in the summers and they would travel in a Volkswagen bug and they would drive for like two weeks across Europe and come and visit us. It was, it was a wonderful experience and I feel like it set me up for a lifetime of being open to diverse cultures and, and diverse peoples. I always wanted to be a writer um, and I never thought that this would be my first book. I've written fiction and uh, stories and I was sort of not particularly, I mean, I'm quite young to write a memoir, I didn't think about that. Um, but it was the invasion of Iraq that uh, sparked this journey of discovery, a deeper discovery of my Iraqi heritage and at the same time uh, this really deep desire to tell the stories of Iraqis to Westerners and kind of record that perspective because I felt that it really wasn't being shown at the time of the invasion and, and leading up to it. I hope that the book is more of a microcosm of the whole country of, of what it has suffered in the last three decades. The book came out uh, originally in Canada in 2007 and I, my son was born the next month so I have two young children so it hasn't been possible. I just felt that the story wasn't anywhere. I mean I was looking for books about Iraqis as the war started and even before that but especially at that time. Uh, literature, novels, poetry, history, anything and there was just nothing there and I thought well if, if someone like me who is Iraqi still wants this and still wants to be able to discover more, what about people who know nothing and who don't have Iraqis in their family? How are they ever going to connect with this supposedly exotic alien culture that we're now going to war with. So it just felt important, it just felt like no one else is doing it and I have a way to do it. And I didn't even necessarily feel that I was the right person to do it, but you know, I kind of took upon myself that challenge and I'm very happy that it came to fruition as a book. It's a family story, you know, it's real human emotions and real family connections that I think permeates through to anybody. Um, you can see the type of relationships that you have with your own family and you learn from it along the way as well. I think it's a terrific book and I think it's a very moving, kind of powerful uh, book and gives a kind of human story behind a complex series of events. I think books like that, they make it a real place with real people. It's really important because then you remember it's not just something you see in the news. These are families that have been torn apart and, and are still torn apart to this day. And she still hasn't been able to go to Iraq seven years later because it's, it's still too dangerous for her to go there. So I think definitely it's, it's very important that it comes in England as well. What kind of a picture of Iraq do you get from this book? Uh, somewhere where people eat a lot. <laughs> oh yes, I've read it. And I was in tears most of the time. I'm very proud of her. To see her uh, reading the book, with, uh, you know, so many people coming here, I'm really, really proud of her. It's amazing, you know, it's really, really amazing. I still don't know how did she manage to put all this emotion in a book uh, with this, without, as you say, sitting food in Iraq. I've never thought that we had such influence, or that like a little girl, she would notice these difference, you know, the food, the language, the different culture. You know, I didn't realize we had. Uh, she noticed these differences. <laughs> I feel Iraq in my bones, though I have never been there. I have never lazed in the shade of the date palm on a stifling hot day or underneath the grape leaves hanging on the vine in the evening. I haven't smelled jasmine or orange blossom scenting a Baghdad night, and I've never tasted mango pickle with maskouf, the speciality fish dish of Baghdad, at an open-air restaurant on the banks of the Tigris. My father, Ibrahim, has done none of these things either since he left Iraq at age 16 in 1960 to go to college in England. Around the world, there are approximately 5 million exiles from a country of 25 million, and about one in five Iraqis don't live in Iraq. Most of them, like my father, are afraid to go back, even in peacetime, so we never have. Yet the garden still exists, 
My father's childhood house still stands. The orange trees are still there. I still do hope that I'll go back one day, you know, and see it for myself. And that will be a whole different experience for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming along and meeting this inspiring author. I hope you've had as good a time as we have. Join us next week as we ramage the streets of London to find you more of these lovely cultural events around London town.